Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is DBZK Crygo, and I'm back with a different kind of video. It's the end of the decade, believe it or not. Pretty crazy. Uh, so I kind of want to just share my favorites from this entire decade of anime. Uh, going to be going through, I guess, my 100 favorite shows of the decade. Uh, going to give a very brief description of all of them. Found it very hard to rank them, so I'm just going to do it in alphabetical order. Except for my top 10, I have a very solid list for that. So I'm going to go into a little more detail with that and actually say what those 10 are after the other 90 in alphabetical order. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, 91 Days. It's a fun gangster thrill ride with a pretty strong cast. Ace Attorney, a very fun and silly adaptation of the Ace Attorney games that is sure to bring a smile to your face and even provide a thrilling mystery at times. Agretzko, an interesting look into Japanese work-life culture with cute Sanrio characters and biting social commentary. Akame Ga Kill, pure, fun, mindless schlock action. Amagi Brilliant Park, a cute and endearing story about hard work with a great cast and great animation by Kiyo Annie. Angel Beats, while a bit overdramatic and inconsistent tonally, it will provide some enjoyable lighthearted moments and some tearjerkers. Anime Gatari, both a celebration of all things anime as well as a surreal satire of it. Strange final arc, but overall a fun time. Anohana, great character writing and a great message about handling death and moving on in life makes this depressing work a must watch. Assassination Classroom, while its large cast and comedy may be a little underwhelming at times, Assassination Classroom provides a heartwarming story about dedication and growth with a very strong central cast. Astra Lost in Space, a very fun space adventure thriller with some unexpected twists. Barakamon, a cute story about learning to relax, accepting criticism, and growing as an artist. Black Clover, a fun shonen jump adventure with likable characters and great fight scenes past the initial episodes. Blood Blockade Battlefront, also known as Kekai Sensen, a very fun and well-animated action story from the creator of Trigun and animated by Studio Bones. Great protagonist and well-developed supporting cast filled with very fun and engaging episodic narratives. Blue Exorcist, great character designs, animation, and an interesting setting make up for some lackluster writing. Can be very entertaining at times, but it's nothing too deep. Batum. Although unfinished, what we have is a simple, fun, battle royale type experience that's definitely worth watching. Danganronpa scratches the itch for the over the top for over the top violence with a cast of quirky characters. Danmachi, or is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon? A simple but well executed adventure fantasy with good character designs and a likable cast. Dororo, a great re-adaptation of Osamu Tezuka's 60s manga, both great action and thought-provoking themes that are very well developed throughout the show's run, uh, make it definitely worth a watch. Double Decker, Doug and Kirill, a spin-off of Tiger and Bunny which I actually haven't seen, it's rather simple and void of deep themes but still tells a fun police procedural. Dr. Stone, an interesting Shonen Jump title that does not focus so much on fighting, but rather a restoration of the world after a second Stone Age. Great protagonist and inspiring themes about the development of technology and the pursuit of innovation. Drifters, a very bloody and gory isekai battle royale with some of history's most fearsome figures. Durarara, from the mind behind Bakano comes another high energy, high excitement thrill ride with an equally large cast with a large scale story not always told in chronological order. Even more interesting and a developed cast better than Bakano due to its much longer runtime, giving it plenty of time to develop its, its large cast. The Fate Franchise. I'm not necessarily a fan of most of the Fate works from this decade, however, its influence and importance must be noted. Ufotable's work has been highly innovative and is frankly insanely gorgeous. Soundtracks have been consistently beautiful, and while most of the series suffer from dialogue and writing issues, when the action when there is action, it surely makes up for it. Fire Force. From the creator of Soul Eater comes another very fun shonen battle series with a unique world and an interesting power system. The cast is strong and the plotline is full of thrills. It, it makes it hard to wait between new episodes or pause a marathon. Food Wars. Another new take on shonen battle manga which pits characters in absurd food battles which yield even more absurd reactions. Very extravagant and fun. Free. A beautifully animated swimming series with a strong message about the bonds of athletes. Gamers, a cute romance story about miscommunication with a small but likable cast. Garo Vanishing Line, a strong anime adaptation of the Tokusatsu series with great action that provides a lot of mindless fun. Golden Kamui, 
a very fun thriller set in the earliest 20, early 20th century Japan, great characters with great designs, an engaging plot, and a good inclusion of the Ainu people, a typically overlooked part of Japanese history and culture. Haikyuu, a thrilling volleyball anime with a great cast and gorgeous animation by Production IG, very influential in popularizing sports anime in the West this decade. Hakata Tonkatsu Ramens, a fun exploration of a society of assassins. High School of the Dead, a very fun and absurd recreation of a zombie B-movie with great direction. Hinamatsuri, a cute story of a mob member and a psychic little girl that becomes his daughter, both endearing and genuinely hilarious with some great recurring jokes and surprisingly great animation, also filled with a ton of heart. How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, a fun, cute girls doing cute things show that's goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle for the audience. Inu Yashiki, from the creator of Gantz comes another blood-filled story about human-alien-cyborg hybrids battling it out in Tokyo. Dumb but fun. Jormungand. Clearly inspired by Black Lagoon, but can't, but can't quite live up to that standard. It's still a fun action show with some wacky characters and pretty good action. Juni Tyson. An insanely dumb but insanely fun battle royale story with some unexpected story elements. Kakegurui. While not on the same caliber as Kaiji, Kakegurui is a fun gambling story with over-the-top animation and characters that sells itself on absurdist reactions. Kill a Kill While not as big a fan as many others, Kill a Kill provides a very absurd story with non about nonconformity with great action, a unique animation style, and a memorable cast. Level E An absurd comedy series from the creator of Hunter x Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho with wacky antics, uh, that is sure to keep you surprised and wondering what's happening next. Little Witch Academia, a fun, well-animated story about a magic school filled with memorable characters. Log Horizon, an isekai which chooses to focus on the politics and sustainability of those sent to the other world. Very unique take on the subject matter with a great protagonist. Love Stage, a very cute gay love story with great chemistry between the two leads which explores a previously underdeveloped character... Uh... <laughs> That's the next one. Just kidding. Uh, very love stage. Very cute gay love story with great chemistry between the two leads. Lupin the Third, the woman called Fujiko Mine, or Fujiko Mine, whatever you want to say. A gorgeous spin off of the Lupin franchise, which explores a previously underdeveloped character and provides an engaging backstory with great writing. Space Patrol Luluko, a very fun, high energy short series that serves as a love letter to everything Studio Trigger. Magi, a fun battle shown in with great character designs and an interesting world drawing from Middle Eastern mythology. Madaka Box, a fun high school story turned absurdist action series that really changes a lot as it goes on. Megalo Box, a retelling of sorts of Ashita no Joe with a great main character and distinct aesthetic style that makes it visually unique from anything else this decade. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, a cute story about an unconventional cast of characters brought together, prompting the question of what defines a family. Incredible central cast, great supporting characters, and beautiful art and animation. Kyo Annie's best TV work this decade. My roommate is a cat. Besides having some cute cat hijinks, there's some real heart at the core of this show. Nichijou, another absurdist comedy with great animation by Kyo Annie and some very likable characters. No Game No Life. While not on the level of a show like Death Note, No Game No Life is a fun isekai series that follows a series of mind games and battles between geniuses, a fun watch with a great color palette which makes the world very bright and expressive. Noragami. While the first season is a bit underwhelming, the storytelling in the second season is very entertaining, filled with some great action animation courtesy of Bones. Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. A cute, fun rom-com with some good character designs and funny dialogue. One Punch Man. Great comedic timing, stellar fight animation, and an interesting look on a superhero society provides an extremely fun viewing experience. While some jokes can get repetitive, there's often enough spacing in between which allows the series to, to breathe and not feel too stale. While the animation does heavily decline for season 2, the writing is still consistently good. Orange. Much like the journey through high school, this series is a bittersweet observation of high schoolers and their attempts to help their depressed friend. Good portrayal of adolescence with a strong emotional cur- per Persona 4 The Animation I've never played any of the Persona games, but this anime adaptation seems to convey the fun and heartfelt themes and messages from the game itself. Great character writing and an engaging plot make this game adaptation definitely worthy of its own merit. Ping Pong The Animation 
From legendary director Masaki Yuasa comes a surreal sports anime about determination and the motivation for being the best. Princess Jellyfish, an interesting exploration of gender and identity with interesting character drama and a solid cast. Prison School, an over-the-top etchy series with tons of fan service, but also a very strong central cast with great humor. Psychopaths, while other seasons are not as strong as the first, the first season provides a fascinating look into a dystopian police state that questions how we judge others and how we decide who is fit to judge us. Punchline, a wacky adventure series that takes a few episodes before becoming entirely clear what the overall point is or even the plot. Definitely worth checking out though and waiting out the first few episodes. Rage of Bahamut, a very fun action fantasy adventure with a great central cast. Recovery of an MMO Junkie, while well, based on a lot of plot contrivances, the overall story is quite cute and entertaining. A warning though, the director is a literal Nazi, uh, but as this came to light, he's been fired from the studio. Rinchi Ekoda-chan, a surreal short series that, deal that details women's issues living in modern Japan. SSSS.Gridman, an homage to tokusatsu action shows that also serves as an exploration of existentialism. Uh, Sakamoto Desuga, or Haven't You Heard, I'm Sakamoto, an absurdist comedy about a seemingly perfect high school student. Sword Art Online, Gun Gale Online. The Sword Art Online spinoff, better than the original. <laughs> a fun battle royale experience. Shimoneta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. A great comedy and satire about censorship and how society views the use of dirty language and sex. Show by Rock. A fun music series from Studio Bones with great music and a likable cast. Soul Eater, not. While not a sequel to Soul Eater, the spin-off does provide a nice return to the world of Soul Eater with some familiar faces. Space Battleship Yamato 2199, a great remake of the original 70s anime, a very fun and dramatic space opera with a great animation and a great cast. Space Dandy, a great return by legendary director Shinichiro Watanabe as he explores the capabilities of animation with a wacky cast and great humor. Steins Gate, a fun sci-fi thriller with one of the best protagonists this decade and a solid main cast. Takunomi, a relaxing show that follows a great cast just chilling out and drinking. Teasing Master Takagi-san, very cute rom-com about young love. Terror and Resonance, while the plot falls apart as the series develops, the directing by Watanabe is stellar and the soundtrack is gorgeous. The Devil is a Part-Timer, an extremely funny reverse isekai that places Satan in the human world, very strong central cast and great comedic writing and timing. The Future Diary, an absurd, overtly violent, but fun action series. The Heroic Legend of Arslan, a fun coming-of-age story with an interesting setting and a likable cast. The Legend of the Galactic Heroes, a faithful remake of the legendary series that details an interesting political war drama. The Promised Neverland, a horror thriller filled with constant plot twists and insane cliffhangers, hard to put down when starting. The Quintessential Quintuplets, a cute harem story with well-written characters and an interesting framing device which confirms the protagonist does definitely end up with one of the girls in the end, which is pretty unique. <laughs> Seven Deadly Sins, a fun shown in battle series with an interesting fantasy world and a large cast that's very fleshed out. Surrey Zuri Children, a cute short series that follows various couples and the different issues teens face while dating. When supernatural battles become commonplace. While a bit generic compared to other trigger works, the series is a fun, lighthearted take on supernatural high school stories. Motokoi, Love is Hard for Otaku, a cute series following a couple composed of otaku. <laughs> Charming cast and a great opening. Yamato kun and the Seven Witches, a cute, harem-like series with a strong romantic core between the two protagonists and a great supporting cast. Yona of the Dawn, a coming-of-age story for a girl forced into hiding after a military coup in ancient Japan. Great action and a solid main cast. Zombieland Saga, best idol show of the decade. Insanely likable main cast, great music, and even good, char and even good character drama. So that's the first 90. I also should have pointed out already, but I forgot. Uh, this list only covers stuff that started this decade. While remakes and spinoffs are allowed, uh, no sequels or continuations of stuff from past decades. So with that established, here is the top 10 from this decade. Coming in at number 10 of the decade for me is Mob Psycho 100. 
arguably one of, if not the most beautiful looking anime from this past decade. Besides having outstanding animation, Mob Psycho has a very strong protagonist with a rather unique mindset for a shonen protagonist. Rather than solve problems with fighting, Mob wishes to peacefully solve problems, and Mob wants to better himself as a human being as he sees this as the way to develop a better lifestyle, as opposed to getting stronger for the sake of being the world's strongest. The supporting cast is also top notch, with Reagan being one of the most lovable characters this decade, who even steals the show from Mob much of the time. The relationship between the two feels very organic, and the way it grows displays excellent writing. Overall, a great series. My Hero Academia. As many issues as I have with this series, I can't help but love it. While the focus may be too much on Deku, the protagonist, at times, and some characters don't always get the chance to shine, when they do, it's finally wealth worth, well worth the anticipation. An engaging superhero story with great fight choreography and fantastic fighting animation makes it nearly impossible to not enjoy. It has such a fun, infectious energy that feels reminiscent of shonen juggernauts like Naruto and One Piece. Can't skip this great cast and fun show. Number 8. Panties and Stocking with Garter Belt. Panty and Stocking is one of the most unique anime in existence and serves as the last great work by Studio Gainax. Its art style is very reminiscent of American cartoons and is littered with over-the-top obscene language, sex, and violence. The high-paced direction and non-stop comedy combined with an unusual art style creates a unique sensation unlike any other anime. The series has a unique feel that is difficult to compare with anything else. The central cast is very strong, with both Penny and Stocking being stellar standout characters, each with their own strong personalities. Although the two differ greatly, their sisterly bond tends to shine through even the darkest of situations. If you love crude stuff, you'll love Penny and Stocking. <clears throat> Parasite, the Maxim. This show is weird. <laughs> Parasite is a great representation of uniquely Japanese horror due to its distortion and alteration of the body and overall use of body horror. While not ever too scary, the strange character designs and eerie character animation will make you feel very uncomfortable at times. Besides being unsettling, Parasite has an engaging story following a cover a covert alien invasion of Earth. Unlike other series from this decade, such as Tokyo Ghoul, where it seems society is ready for some sort of monster or alien threat, the true horror arises in Parasite from a fear of the unknown and the lack of preparation society has against a threat like this. At the same time, the series is full of interesting themes such as defining humanity, how humans interact with each other, and dealing with loss. Parasite also contains a weird, unique dubstep soundtrack that enhances the weird alien atmosphere. Parasite's anime also does a great job of preserving the original 90s manga, but makes subtle changes that makes it feel like it came out today. Parasite is a must-watch for anyone that could stomach the horror it contains. Yuri on Ice Best sports show and best romance of the decade. The core romance of the series is extremely strong and the development of the relationship between Yuri and Victor makes for an engaging and heartfelt watch. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> the portrayal of a gay romance is well done in a great way as it's written like any other romance story, as if not dealing with an idea that society as a whole might not totally get behind. This further enhances the viewing experience as it feels so organic and real. The animation and soundtrack too are great as combined they present beautiful scenes of pure expression through great character actions. Truly one of the most beautiful anime series of the decade. <clears throat> the Tatami Galaxy the core messages at the center of this Yuasa work are so important to understand and very applicable to everyone struggling to understand their place in society and wishing for a way to do things again. The show is easily the most dense and well written in terms of thematic exploration out of this entire decade. I do not want to say much as I feel it's important to watch this one on your own and experience its ideas firsthand. Devil Man Crybaby Another Yuasa work since he's just such a genius. A dark and eerie retelling of the classic Go Nagai manga, Devilman Crybaby features another uniquely Yuasa art style combined with great storytelling and a great cast of characters. Like Parasite, Devilman features some pretty grotesque body horror and some truly unsettling moments, combined with an engaging plot and, central, and strong central cast. Again, this is another show I don't want to say too much about as I feel the plot needs to be experienced firsthand, as some moments are truly shocking, and I do not necessarily even want to spoil the feel of the show as it's so unique. Definitely, definitely worth seeing. Uh, again, I don't want to spoil it though, as a lot of its enjoyment comes from not knowing too much. Number three on my list is Death Parade. 
From the first episode of this show, I knew I found a new favorite. A deep exploration into the human psyche through an interesting lens, Death Parade follows those who have just died and examines their true nature as seen in how they live their lives, and how they act when they think their lives are still on the line, not knowing they're dead. True human emotion is on display in this series and it gets pretty intense at times. An excellent score and occult atmosphere accompanies this eerie series and solidifies it as an excellent example that Studio Madhouse still knows how to produce top tier stuff. Just like my number two pick, Hunter x Hunter. <clears throat> Hunter x Hunter is an excellent remake of the 90s Shonen Adventure series from Yu Yu Hakusho creator Yoshihiro Togashi. Hunter x Hunter features consistently great storytelling despite its length as well as a deeply thought out power system which relies upon outsmarting one's opponent instead of pure strength. And another feature I love is the ability to actually control and develop your own abilities from scratch. While in many battle shonens it seems abilities are determined in some sort of arbitrary way, Hunter x Hunter truly allows its characters to develop their own abilities as they see fit. These characters too are a standout as although the cast is rather large, each character seems to stand out in their own way with their own interesting story arc. For a battle shonen, Hunter x Hunter can get pretty dark and shows an intense focus on the declining mental state of its characters, resulting in mental breakdowns be that become the focus of the story. Certainly a must watch for shonen fans and anime fans in general. My number one show of the decade has to be JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. What else is there to be said about JoJo's that has not been said before? An insane cast, a wacky plotline that spans multiple generations, a unique and crazy power system resulting in uniquely, in highly unique fights. Some of the most memorable protagonist and antagonist in all of anime. Extremely stylized with gorgeous designs, music references everywhere, and tons and tons of posing. In a decade full of weird, extreme internet culture and the prevalence of memes and shit posts, nothing better represents this decade than JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Well guys, that's my top 100 anime of this decade. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Obviously, I have not seen everything from this decade. I'm sure there's shows people are going to say I missed out on. Uh, maybe there's shows that I've seen and didn't enjoy as much. Uh... There's still plenty of shows I've seen from this decade that I did enjoy, but these are the ones I think are the best. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys soon. Uh, have a great new year, and I'm excited to see what the new decade holds.